Deanna, and you're watching Eclectic Arts. So yes, we can do this, 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 this. We cannot do this, this, well, this. I mean, you just put so much effort and care into what you do and it really shows. <laughs> How did this get here? <laughs> I'm really, I'm happy to be a part of, of the legacy you're building with uh, Eclectic Arts. Same. I need to be outside. That's my office. <laughs> I know we're from Alabama, but we do read a couple books now and again, now and again, we've been on three. Sorry, who is this? Seriously? This is Colonel Deacons. And you are? <sighs> Jamie? What are you doing up there? Cleaning up space junk. Staring at the earth. <laughs> Go outside and smell the air. And the earth, too, and plants, and some of the birds, and insects. Remember, you live on the only planet in the middle of a vast universe that can sustain human life. Could we do this again? Like, every night? Rescue teams are... No news. Pilot's condition. Uh, I need to talk to someone about the, the astronaut. <laughs> Crashed. What are you to the pilot? Good night, Star Woman. Good night, Lighthouse. Can you hear me? Jamie? Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I'm Mark Sugiyama from Eclectic Arts based here in Seattle, Washington. Thank you so much for joining me on this Monday, the 11th of July, 2022, 7-11, Slurpee Day. And a few quick housekeeping details before we get to uh, tonight's interview. Um, I want to thank Kaylee K.O. Reese for stopping by last week again. Uh, with that tremendous news that she's been cast as one of the leads in HBO's True Detective season four. And as she was saying, she can't believe it because she comes from the boxing world. And um, if you have ever had a chance to see or talk to Kaylee, you understand why she got cast. She's got an immense presence and such a, a strong hearted warrior of a, of a lady. Um, so that was great that she came by last week to talk. And then for me personally, it's so wonderful to catch up with the band Alice three times uh, in the last week uh, in person instead of virtually. And uh, I do have a few other live streams coming up, including one from a local guitarist that uh, I met opening up one of the Alice shows. He was a tremendous talent, and I can't wait to talk to him further about what he has coming up. If this is your first time joining me on my YouTube channel, if you could do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell, I would greatly appreciate that. And if you're over on the Twitch side of things, if you could follow me over there, I would greatly appreciate that as well. And if you want to know what I have coming up, the social media platform of choice for me is Instagram. So I'm on there as Eclectic Arts Media, one word. That's where I post everything first. And then some of that information migrates over to other social media platforms. Um, and that's that's kind of where we're at. So I'm really glad to be back in the virtual world. Tomorrow I'll be back in the in-person world. Um, and I think I'm in the in-person world on Friday and <laughs> Saturday. And the, again, um, the other thing I can mention is that some people have been asking me about the fun table sessions, which is what I used to do. And we have not done one this year and we're already in July and it hasn't been for a lack of trying. It's been schedules. Um, so including my own. So Right now, we're this close to finally having the first fun table session with three guests for 2022. And again, if you follow me over on Instagram, uh, you'll find out when that's actually set in stone, ready to go, day and time, and then who the guests are. And I'm really excited to have uh, that back in uh, back in this virtual part. So, but let's get to my interview tonight. My guests today are talented artists, each in their own right. They are the co-directors of an amazingly endearing film called Static Space, which was a part of the Bentonville, Bentonville Film Festival. Please welcome to the Collective Arts Virtual Studio, Kate Black Spence and John Klein. Hello. 
Hi there. Hey, everybody. How are both of you? Oh, great. Thank you so much. Yeah, it thank you great. so much. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me about your film and, and your everything else you have going on. And as I was telling you pre-show, um, I absolutely loved your film. So um, no one's paying me. No one's trying to tell me to come talk. I wanted to talk about this film with you and get more people to know about it because it's so well done and so heartfelt. Um, so I can't wait to hear more about it. And um, it sounds like, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Kate, that this whole kind of originated from something where an author was really impressed with your work who was like uh, written like a, a character or a story that is, it kind of went back and forth can you kind of explain that whole origin of this yeah it's such a it's such a unique i think origin story um so john cannon is a uh, a writer who uh, found me on twitter during a um a live tweet of a web series episode that was being aired and i was in the web series it was uh called i think it was hashtag that we started this all on now i can't remember uh, but it was hashtag it was definitely tello films and uh so he reached out we started talking and uh we formed what he called the mutual admiration society because i read one of his books and loved it and uh i geeked out over that he and i just sort of struck up a friendship he wrote a book called can you hear me uh, which was the story of Jamie and the story of Noah. Um, it's a full novel. It's so It goes in so much more detail than our short film. But uh, he told me that if I ever wanted to adapt, because he knew I'd also written a play, if I ever wanted to adapt it into a play, that I could do that. Um, also, I'm going back a bit. <laughs> the character Jamie, he wrote for me based on uh, what he knew of me. So um, so all that to say, I wrote the play. Um, that was its own really cathartic experience. I wrote that in 2020. Uh, so the pandemic had just started and the idea of writing a story about sort of self-selected isolation and forced isolation resonated. And, uh, and then John Klein read it and told me that we should make it into a film. So we did. I don't know how you even told me or like, Oh, what, when the conversation started around that, because I like you, you I, I had been curious about Ghosts of Whitechapel, which was the play right. that you had written prior to this. And then you had said, oh, yeah, and I wrote this thing, too. And I was kind of like, I, I'm, I'm always kind of in the hunt for like things to make just like as a filmmaker, I have to be making things. And COVID, like when COVID started, it was this like break in all of that, right? Like suddenly all of us who were creating things out there with people and collaborating with people were like no you can't do that anymore and it suddenly like sent us like kind of it, it sent me into this like I, I need to find something to make and i read static space the play over um over the fourth of july in 2020 and I, I you know you were saying before this like how you sort of emotionally resonated with the movie like I, that the, the play just bowled me over like it just it was such an emotional experience um reading it like at my in-laws house like over fourth of july weekend and i, I was and also like because of the way it was written because it was written to be a covid safe play like to some degree like the characters are on opposite ends of the stage they don't get within six feet of anybody there's some screens and some audio stuff like so it's all very like social distance it's covid so social distancing on stage and so i was like well okay, that's, if it's COVID safe on stage, it must be COVID safe to like make a movie with. And it seems like it's something very self-contained. Maybe we could figure out a way to do that. Um, and then of course, like you know, the conversations about like, oh, do we make this a short? Do we make it a feature? Like, can we build a space station? Probably not, <laughs> money. Like there's all these things that are kind of like, you know, we don't have because <laughs> we're, yeah. we're poor artists. Um, and so yeah. we, we, we went back and forth and Kate then started the work of adapting it into a short from that. And then the short was what we wound up filming, what, four months, four months after that in October of 2020. Right. Um, but it was this chance to like, just go and let's make, let's make something. And then, you know, because of the nature of the script, it wound up being something that I think all of us really connected with in a very personal way. Okay, and so Kate, I'm curious, how long was the play? Was that a full length play then? The play was full length. So the, um, I would say the short film sort of tracks with the first act of the play in some ways. Um, the second act deviates quite a bit. Um, it's, it, it definitely gets to delve much more into both characters. We actually see them both coexisting on stage 
Uh, they share separate halves of the stage, split down the center, but they share this, the stage time. So you're watching them simultaneously going through their own sort of experiences and their own kinds of isolation. Um, yeah, I, I still have a real sweet spot for the, the play. I hope that that can get produced at some point because I do feel like I love these characters so much and I want people to know their, their full rich history. But that said, the short film for me, I love because I sort of refer to it as sort of the Rorschach test of people bring what they want to bring to these characters and they fill in the, the gaps. They don't even realize they're doing it and they make these really rich backstories. And I, I kind of love that. I think that's one of the gifts of short films in general, but it's where I think, um, I think John and I think our editor, I, we all sort of, I think found a, a nice comp, a nice mix. It's 930 at night here in my time. And that is after my bedtime. I'm doing my best. I apologize. We have, we have children, we have children. So like just the brain fog is so real. So I apologize. Real. But yeah, it's, I, I think we found a really nice, um, a cohesion, I think, of all of these things that I think it's the reason I think it speaks to people. And I think that means a lot to me. The play is very, like, it's so different, not just in the, the detail, but also in the type of conflict that emerges. Like, I, I think what's, what, what, I, what I find so unique about the, the movie, the short, is that it, for the most part, it's relatively, like, conflict-free. Like, there's not a lot of antagonism, like the big you know, sort of like the last, you know, five minutes of the, the movie where, you know, like spoiler alert, where like, you know, Noah's Noah's ship blank. Um, where like when that happens, that's that's not in the play. That's not in the book. Like there's there's different things that they're dealing with that are that allow them to, you know, the, the play includes other characters in both of their lives and it's able to do that and the, and the short needed to be very contained both both from a logistic like covid standpoint but also because it's a short you can't go into all those things like it becomes very exclusively jamie's story so to like kate's point like people bringing what they want to it i mean you can watch the movie and for a good portion of the movie you could think noah's catfishing her like you you could think any number of things about that relationship and you know, like there's there's so many levels of interpretation to that that work because you don't have the full picture. You don't have all the information. There are those gaps, like Kate said, in the their backstories, their their you know their own relationship, um, the town, the people are really you don't you don't have, you don't have any of those things. So you can bring so much of yourself to it, which I think I, to Kate's point, I think is really cool. Yeah, and I I think for myself when I watch it and, and listening to both of you that. Um, that aspect that since it was filmed during COVID, um, the isolation that everyone was feeling, myself included, um, and watching that, if there's some kind of, you know, level of emptiness inside of you, you start resonating with the character. And it didn't even have to be the same situation. It's just like, man, this is kind of what I'm going through right now. And uh, I wish someone would walk through the door or I wish that someone would come on my radio kind of a thing, a voice um, that would kind of make you feel better and make you not feel so alone um, and feel connected to, you know, mankind again. Yeah. Um, and like you said, that's open to interpretation. It could be someone else could watch it and something else resonates with them, some other aspect of it, which is just, yeah, it's just phenomenal. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I think for me, the importance of telling a story about human connection, I think right now is one of the most radical acts that we can be doing. And I think that's really, if we've learned anything recently, it's, it's that that human connection should not ever be taken for granted and that it can be taken away, you know, and, and going the extra mile to hear someone else's story can change your own perspective of yours. So. Yeah, very, very well said. And I want to mention that uh, Matt Col Colera, uh, production sound mixer, just as high in the chat. So. Oh, Matt, hi. Hi, hi Matt. How's it going? Matt is such a boss. <laughs> such a boss. <laughs> I'm not even blowing smoke up Matt's ass because he's listening to us. Like we we'd, normally we'd talk about Matt. Drop him. <laughs> yeah, we liberally name drop Matt whenever we talk about this movie because, like, so because obviously, like, so much of the movie is sound driven, and Matt was our our sound mixer on the on on set, and there were so many logistical elements to figure out because a, a really important part of the the story of of the production was like this relationship between Jamie and Noah, and from a like from a pragmatic standpoint, when you're on set trying to record that, 
Like there are lots of ways you can do that. You can have, you know, you can have Kate saying her lines and there could be like a PA, like say reading the lines off camera or something like that, or she could just be delivered, whatever. However, we were really adamant that Mariah Copeland who plays Noah be a huge part of that. Like we wanted to have like the real honest to goodness, emotional connection between these two voices and record that live. Not just like, oh, you know, a PA is recording and then Mariah records her lines later or Mariah's on set. Like we couldn't have Mariah on set because of COVID regulations. There were things we had to sort of work out. So Mariah was in her apartment in Chicago, except for the few hours that she was on set. Uh, again, spoiler alert. But um, the the bulk of the time, Mariah was at her apartment with a sound recorder that I had given her like before we left for the shoot. Um, and then Matt had rigged up, I think it was called an earwig, where he basically had an earpiece in Kate's ear that Kate hid with her hat, which is why Jamie's wearing a hat. <laughs> That way is really cold, but like because of that, like we had, a war- we had a wardrobe sort of situation that was allowed her to hear Mariah's voice in her ear, and I had my AirPods that were hooked up to Zoom. Zoom was running into Matt's audio. Like, it was like there were basically like several different channels of audio that were happening. That Matt was able to juggle all of these things, like. And and reason all that out and and, and yeah it was just it was incredible and then and then for, for you know and then for that extra mile he went and actually like built basically like a, a COVID sound booth in the barn so like Kate and Mariah could be in like opposite like areas recording ADR for the whole montage where they're having all those conversations yeah Matt's a boss Matt's a big Shout boss yeah no, it sure sounds like Matt's a boss good grief. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, things I, you don't expect. Like, oh yeah, this is such a simple movie to make. Like it's just <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I think mean, not. We shot it all in three days too, which was also uh, a challenge. We didn't realize how long the movie was going to be. Um, we thought it was a fifteen-minute movie, and it uh, it was not. So <laughs> that that's a. I am. Dumbfounded. Three days is what it took to film this? Three days plus, I think we'd count maybe a half day where John went out and did some drone shots and we got one pickup shot in somebody else's garage. Um, that was just for some the B-roll footage. Oh no, something fell off. Um, it was some B-roll footage of uh, me running something through the saw. But yeah, it was essentially three days. We, need, we needed to make Kate look like she was competent at woodworking <laughs> and so we our editor actually uh her uh, husband matt it also he um wound up like he, he is a woodworker and he has all these tools in his garage so we went over to his garage for like an hour and you know he taught her how to use these various tools for like a hot second and we filmed this b-roll looking up at the ceiling of the garage so it looks like the barn and there's all these like it was all, like all the movie magic things Three days, I think, before we shot, John was like, so you wrote this. So, I mean, you you know how to handle, like, woodworking equipment, right? I was like, oh, no. No, I don't. <laughs> I, was, I was, no, I have no There's idea. So much cheating. There's just so much cheating throughout this movie. A lot of sanding. Um, then, I spend a lot of time sanding. <laughs> that's a credit to Maggie O'Brien, our production designer as well, who, and we, we were very lucky, too, with our location, um, Timberlake Playhouse. Um we we got through Facebook, um, Lori Empen, who plays Mrs. Gunderson in the movie at the beginning of the movie. Um, she had gotten in touch with Kate through Facebook and she was uh, had worked with Timberlake Playhouse or was on the board or something like that. She, she had worked with Timberlake Playhouse out in Mount Carroll and Paul Stancato, who was there, he just just hooked us up was you know for for a song, was able to give us this barn location, the house that was next to the barn. Um, it was basically this 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 kind of theater camp that yeah. was out of commission, obviously, because of COVID. They couldn't do summer camps for students to come in and put on these shows. So we had places to stay. We could bubble on site. Um, the scene shop and the, you know all the props that were there. We were able to pull tools from there. And Maggie just set up this whole what usually is an event space, this barn. 
she retooled it to look like this woodworking shed, essentially using all of these things. Um, and it's kind of amazing. Like the transformation is kind of amazing. You know, you always look at like before and after pictures. It's just, yeah, she nailed it. I love hearing all this cheating that you're talking about with the movie magic and everything else. Because again, for someone like me that doesn't know how this works, I love hearing how it, how it came together. And what I saw for you know 29 minutes or however long the length was, um, I would never think about what you went through or all the other kind of little tricks to make it, to pull it off. If you're, if you're wanting one more, my other favorite tidbit is that uh, it was freezing cold when we were doing this shoot. It happened to be the three days that we could make it all work. Um, it was, so cold and in the the barn right it's just cement floor it's even colder in the barn than it is outside so we're shooting everything so at one point you know i i asked if we could use matt actually matt hey how about to matt again uh matt sound blanket that he was using i was like i'm so cold can i justify putting this on in this scene so there's like a moment where like i put this blanket on and it's actually just like a soundproofing blanket that i'm putting around my shoulders because it's freezing and there's a moment where it's supposed to be raining and i like look up and there's rain coming down but actually in that shot it's snowing actually in the background uh so we had to shoot really carefully to make sure you didn't see the snow while they also dripped a uh, soaking wet sock on my face so I could have the effect of, <laughs> of having rain, water. Rain right? droplets. And I think it's a beautiful moment and it looks great. But every time I see it, I cringe a little. So I'm like, oh my God, it was so cold. <laughs> well, and you're wearing like three layers. Like, I'm wearing just, like, every- You have a coat, you have a sweater, you have another coat. And it like you're bundled up. It every I miserable. had. Yeah, I was wearing every There's single- No reason. Coat. No reason anyone would be sitting outside during that time. <laughs> it's just, oh, yeah, it's it such a strange thing. Oh God! And I see um, hello from Gian. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, yeah, yeah. Matt's saying thank you for your novel to Gian. If I'm saying oh, that. John, John Cannon. John, or John? Yes, there we go. Oh, Sorry. John. Hi, John. <laughs> I don't know who John is, but hi, John Cannon. Oh, thanks, sweet. Right. That's nice. Yeah, so you got I some. I still haven't met John. I haven't still. I, I've interacted with him several times on Facebook now, and I've I never have, met. In John fairness, person. I've known him much longer than you, and only just met him in January. <laughs> so <laughs> we never like we're you know it's he lives in Oklahoma and and cool. Thank you, John. Thanks for everything. <laughs> so yeah, you definitely have some of your um, your entourage here <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> Um, so you, it took three days, three and a half days to film this. And, um, I'm always curious about short films is the life of a short film through the film festival circuit. Is that basically where it can live or are there some other avenues that I'm missing out on? I mean, yes. And I, so let's, first of all, I would say there's not a lot of money in short films right? Like we're not going to become millionaires off of this movie. And you, you hear that even for like, Oscar nominated short films or Oscar winning short films, those films are sort of stepping stones for the directors, the writer, the stars to like get other things, right? To do features, to do, you know, commercial work, to do whatever it is. Like it's a step, it's kind of a stepping stone in a way. Um, and so for a, like from a, from a business standpoint or for like life of the short standpoint, there are places where shorts can get distribution. We've, we've had talks with a couple of different, um, you know, channels and things like that where you can have short films made available, subscription-based things, you know, that sort of stuff. I, I, for me, like, I think Kate, and Kate would agree with this too. I don't know, we didn't make, we, we just wanted to make this. Like, I don't, I don't know there was, a, there was even a discussion between the two of us of like, let, let's figure out where this film will go. Let's, let's try and use this as a step, you know, we just didn't have those conversations about what's the life of this because really we just we just wanted to create something that like meant something to us yeah. and so i think what's been so like heartwarming and wonderful for us is that like the film has played at the festivals it's played at and that people have it's resonated with so many different people all over the world at this point like yeah, like, I don't even I don't even know what what like what we expected. It's it definitely exceeded what I think any of our expectations were as far as the audience Absolutely. that the movies found. Definitely exceeded expectations, and I would say at this point, I mean, one of the goals of some short films, and I think I would say ours, is uh, that we get enough interest that we could also maybe help fund a feature of the film. Um, it's something that we've talked mm -hmm. about. It's something that we've 
uh, dreamed about. I, I wrote another short film actually with almost the same script uh, that is just Noah's perspective. And my thought at the time was we have Noah's short film that can exist and we can have Jamie's that exists basically the same conversations, but completely separate of what happens outside of those conversations. And uh, I thought we could intersperse them and eventually, and basically be like halfway towards a feature film. And John's like, you know, if we have to build a spaceship, we might as well just go for the feature. I was like, yes, that, that is accurate. That makes sense. <laughs> I mean, it's a wonderful script and it's a great idea, but it, it, it's the type of thing where like, I think we, and again, like the play, I love the play. And there's moments in the play that like hit so hard and are so powerful that there's no way we could feature them in the short just because of a variety of different reasons. And so the, what excites me about the potential of a feature is, you know, getting to show those moments, getting to expand on those things, getting to tell the story beyond what is in this barn, right? Like mm -hmm. there's there's so much... It becomes a different story though as well and that's it's, it's exciting but there, that's the stepping stone kind of idea is we hope that this movie plants the seed in other people's heads not just ours so that we can have the chance to tell that story sometime and, and, and that makes sense to me because as you were telling me during this and even when i watched it i kept thinking is there enough meat on the bone here to kind of flesh this out and say, oh yeah there's definitely errors you can go with this um beyond just what i'm seeing for you know half an hour or so and it makes perfect sense that you know this might be, like you said, maybe give uh, interest to finance folks and other people that, that can kind of pull some strings. Like, hey, we would love to see this made into a feature and talk about production. And before I move on, I see Alexa and Connor saying hello to you as well. Oh, it's everybody. The whole gang's here. <laughs> all we did a great all tour for the, news, the, the movie. And I mean, even the trailer that you played, I hope that everyone noticed that that, that score is just so much of the soul of the film. Oh, they killed it. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> um, so as we're, we're getting close to winding down our time, um, what's coming up for the, for the short film, but then also what's coming up for each, each of you individually? So are, are there film festivals that are going to be showing? What's going on with the life of uh, Static Space? So as far as film festivals go, we're on a little bit of a break right now, but we have a, like a bunch of them that are like getting notifications like in the next like couple of weeks. Uh, we know we're going to be playing at the Gen Con Film Festival at Brighton and Hove's Film Pride 2022 in the beginning of August. And then in September, the Iowa Independent Film Festival like just announced, just notified us today. And that's September 8th through the 10th. And then the Lonely Seal Independent Film Screenplay and Music Festival is in October. So we have four different festivals that we're definitely going to screen in. And we're waiting for more. So I, we'll, we'll see kind of what transpires. But we have another, a lot of festivals left to hear from still. And I know at least one that you didn't mention. So I'm guessing there's some that haven't announced yet. Is that is that correct, John? Or I'm trying to think. There's, there's maybe one or two others. There's I another want, one in see. Indiana. But... Which is a delight every time we get to be screened in Indiana. It's a joy because I feel like the Indiana crowds have a very different response to this film than others do. Um, but I'm, I'm also, I don't want to stay on that subject. John, what else do you have coming up? <laughs> I am, um, well, so that's, I'm actually co directing, I guess I'm just, I'm just co directing things now. I, uh, I'm co directing a feature film called Adult Children. Uh, with my uh, writing partner for the past two years, um, Steve Nist, um, and that's going into production in the beginning of August. Um, so that's that's ramping up. So that's keeping me very busy right now. Uh, and I also teach. I teach full time at Elmhurst University in their digital media program. So that's a, a lot of of very fun, inspiring stuff for me. Just getting to be around people, who, young, young people who are getting to go out and do these kinds of things, and hopefully guide the way for that the next generation of filmmakers. That's fun for me, so. What about you, Kate? What are you doing? What are you going on? <laughs> uh, not, not much. I, um, I am primarily an actor, um, but I've taken a lot of time off of acting outside of film just because I feel like uh, it's been weird, which is part of why I wrote the script as a play to be COVID friendly. Um, theater makes me a little nervous right now, but I, I think I'm, I've been stepping my toes in there. I did a reading yesterday and I've got another one coming up. So I might start with doing some theater again, hoping to get some more film work coming up. But um, mostly I've just been writing and I've written another play 
Um, so I've got three now and I'm sort of shopping all three around and we'll go from there. That's about, I mean, I don't really have anything concrete right now, but I'm, I'm excited to just be creating right now. Well, no, that sounds great that you're, that you are creating and that John, you're in the getting ready to ramp up in August and, and start co-directing again. And, um, I definitely have uh, more questions for you, but I'm going to keep to my time limit. Um, and. John and Kate, thank you so much for taking the time today. I really appreciate it. And again, I wish you every success with uh, with the film because I, I loved it and I thought it was so great. And everybody in the chat that had something to do with the film, thank you too because <laughs> it was so good. Yeah, thank all of you. you awesome. Thank you, you so, much. so much. Thank you. And thank you, Mark. Really appreciate you having us. Thank you. And have a, have a good night. If you ever want to come back on to promote anything, please let me know. You know how to get a hold of me. I love having guests come back second, third, fourth time. You can look at my YouTube channel and I'm not blowing smoke. That's the truth. <laughs> so. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I look forward to that. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everyone.